Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. Now, in this video I'm going to do a full review of the FY6900 AWG. I just received it and well just been a week already but yeah I'm going to do a um, review, full review of everything, every um, feature this device has. So let's get started. So you may ask what's in the box, well obviously the waveform generator, nothing else except for two BNC to alligator wires and one BNC to BNC and of course um, the AWG as I just said, uh, that's in the box uh, and a little card for your warranty quality certificate thing, yeah it already has glue on it so and let's connect it to my oscilloscope to perform well some basic testing. Uh, it has an output range of uh, zero. I don't think it's able to go negative. No, it's an output range of zero to 24 volts. Now this is the 60 megahertz model. So it's capable of providing a 60 megahertz sine wave. Now currently it's set at 24 volts. So let's check and verify that with our oscilloscope. Let's zoom in. Our well, signal looks pretty clean, pretty stable as well. So that's really good. Now let's perform a fine adjustment to use my scope's full measuring range. Oh, that's. I always make that mistake. Like that. This measure. Peak to peak uh, 24.02, so it's pretty accurate. Let's see if. Um, oh, yeah, it changes voltage uh, immediately. Oh, yeah, it's not that accurate anymore. It is at 20 volts and it's shown 20. Dot, oh, a little bit too much, 20 and a half volts. So might need some calibration uh, let's jump to 10 volts it's a little to the high side and zero oh well, it's not completely zero let's look at it real close yeah this is just ac ripple look at the minimum voltage we can set it's starting to show something it's a little off as well I think oh no it isn't I wouldn't go down to 0 0.2 volts oh, that's a little bit too low let's see at 0 0.1 volts how the signal looks oh yeah that's a lot better that's a lot better let's see at 0 0.7 oh yeah so yeah, that's, that's, I wouldn't go down uh, below 0 0.1 volts because you can see lots of strange things and your signal is not really that clear. Well, let's set it at 5 volts. Oh, now it's, well, basically spot on. And it's at 5.02. The frequency is a little off. My scope says it's uh, 400 and 84.988 kilohertz and it's supposed to be 549 kilohertz so that's a little off well let's change it to 550 changes pretty quick but the dot 988 stays the same uh, let's look at the offsets now for this now let's first look at the duty cycle currently it's set at 50 percent and you can't change it because it's a sign but you can uh, do a phase change now you won't see that of course because i'm triggering at uh, this waveform so let's install the channel 2 so i can show you the phase adjust let's enable channel 2 4 volt sine wave there you go so now it's well matched and uh, let's go back to channel 1 and edit the phase look you can see it shift the more I change the phase, the more you will see it shift to the right. 
So 180 degrees out of phase. Well, it looks like this. And oh, you can do 360 or 359.999 is the maximum phase change, which of course is, makes sense. You can't go below zero, which obviously also makes sense. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And let's see what the offset is like. Offset, so currently it's at zero volts. Can we actually measure the offset? I think that this will give us the offset. Yeah, it's a sinus, so it goes below zero. So currently the offset is zero. And yeah, it's half the sinus, so minus 212.5 volts. So if we enter offset of 0 0.5, it obviously is zero. Now you can see that the sinus is shifting to the right and to the uh, top of my screen. That's because I'm triggered on it. So let's go, ne you can go negative. Uh, let's see what happens if we go negative five volts. Now, of course, I need to re-trigger. Yeah, it's not really that accurate. I was expecting a value of minus 7.5, not 7.7. .7. So, uh, and let's see how low we can go. We can go to minus 12 volts. Oh, I can see something strange happening over here. This is not how it's supposed to go, I think. I don't think that, oh yeah, it's getting clipped. It's so, um, I guess that your maximum offset depends on your amplitude setting. So it's, again it's 5 volts, peak to peak 5 volts. But if you go any lower, it's getting clipped. Look, it's already changing there. So yeah, you need to stay within half of the voltage, your amplitude voltage above uh, minus 12. So we should be theoretically able to go to minus ten and a half, but as you can see, it's not really accurate. So let's change that to zero. It's really nice that you can use these arrows to to jump. Look, the well, the cursor is jumping around with these, so you can set a, a frequency really quickly, really easily. The wave. There are a few waves you can uh, pick. Well, obviously sine wave, square wave, and with the square wave, you can also adjust the offset, not the duty cycle. Uh, you can adjust the phase, but obviously it's not happening because we're triggering at the um, signal we're adjusting the phase of. Same here, you can adjust the frequency. Let's check, because this should have a max frequency of Ooh, what? It, it just turns into a sine wave. Okay, um, yeah. This is rather interesting. I surely have it set to square. So, this is, I think you can do a square wave up to, Yeah, I think 25 megahertz, something like that. And then it gets really ugly. So I wouldn't go above 20 megahertz actually. Ah, this is really weird. I, I was expecting a message to be there like, hey, you can't go above 20 megahertz or 25 megahertz, but uh, you can, you can go to 60, but then you're basically just outputting a sine wave instead of a square wave. Oh, that's the wrong button meant this one so square rectangle um, now this is the one that you can adjust the duty cycle of this is basically your PWM emulator signal thing let's actually measure the duty cycle like so so duty cycle 80% well that's pretty accurate let's see the 
resolution. My scope's not uh, not having it. Well, the voltage is also changing when I change the duty cycle. That's curious. Well, this is pretty good. Let's zoom in. Yeah, as you would expect. So you can use this as a PWM uh, emulator thing with a variable duty cycle and frequency. And also, yeah, you can adjust the phase, a trapezoid, whatever that might be. Oh yeah, there it is. You can set the rise time. So currently it's at eight nanoseconds. Why isn't the screen updating? It's not showing a trapezoid, so yeah. Uh, up until you reach the point where you're going to cut into the... So this is also a little bit curious because the, the, the rise time and the actual amplitude depends on the rise time. And I would say well just cramp it together like so. But yeah, that's a little bit questionable. I wouldn't expect this to, to actually happen in such a way. I was expecting you know, make a steeper angle but preserve the amplitude. So CMOS, now this is your uh, Arduino capable signal because this will go from 5 volts to 0 volts and not... Um, well, the other signals were at... Uh, where the, the, the amplitude was in the middle so the middle of the, the wave was at 0 volts so the the bottom side of the wave was at minus 2.5 volts for a 5 volt amplitude and top side at 2.5 volts and this is your Arduino uh, signal CMOS that goes from well not specifically 5 volts because you can change the amplitude of course but it starts at it, it starts at ground so this also has an offset you can also make the offset negative and Let's trigger on it, there you go. This also has a duty cycle and a phase, of course. So, adjustable pulse. Everything is in row, frequency, amplitude, offset. But then we've got pulse and then we've got phase. And here it's the other way around. So, a little bit annoying. So, where is the pulse then? I don't see a pulse. I'm not sure what this function is used, I'm guessing that it will just generate a pulse with a specific period between it, but it's not really happening. There is something. Is that the pulse? It's really clunky. So now all of a sudden the pulses disappear. Yeah, it's a pulse. Let's press the default, because sometimes my oscilloscope messes up. Position... It messes up the pulses. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. I think that it's the second time that the bug occurred. It's some kind of memory issue or something. I'm not sure, but it's really frustrating me. So now this should be a pulse of 100 nanoseconds. It's a little bit off. I'm at 50 nanoseconds per division and it's a little bit off. From half the amplitude it's 100 nanoseconds but not from bottom to bottom. So DC, I guess that this is just a DC power supply then. Not entirely sure what this is about because nothing is happening. Frequency, we can adjust the frequency. Oh, volt. Ah, there you go. So no amplitude. Duty cycle. We can't adjust. We oh, we can adjust the phase. Well, what's the point of adjusting the phase of a constant DC signal? Not sure, but hey, it's there. Let's actually measure the accuracy. Ooh, yeah, it's also a little bit high. It's at 4.4, and I'm I've got the AWG set at 4 volts. So uh, let's see, this is a triangle, oh wow, if you switch between DC and the next wave, which will be triangle, it copies the offset or the, the volts value that you set to the offset field. That's not what you want. So triangle, well this looks 
really clean actually. 4.99 volts, so yeah, that's pretty pretty accurate. Can you adjust? No, you can't adjust. Yeah, obviously you can adjust the phase, but same story. Ramp, well, that's uh, a ramp. Duty cycle, no offset. Phase, yeah, it's a shame that you can't set the rise time. Well, if there was that other, uh, I think it's called the trapezoid, where you can set the rise time, but this, uh, you can't really set anything other than offset, amplitude and frequency. Negative ramp, well, this is just a ramp, but then in the other direction. Oh, the frequency is not really, it's, ooh, it's going all around. It's not locked at, uh, at the right voltage or at the right frequency. Yeah, that's a little bit of a shame. Stair triangle, well, I guess that this is, oh, wow, cool. This is really cool. So yeah, amplitude, same story. Stair step, well, yeah, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Negative stair step, positive exponent. Well, this is, uh, this really, yeah, really amazes me that this is there. And you can also uh, adjust the frequency, the amplitude and the offset and the phase, I suppose, yes, and the phase. Not anything else, A negative uh, exponent. P fall exponent, oh, this is positive. Now it goes down instead of up. Would be nice if you can adjust the um, the time to add a little uh, segment of nothing in between there. So negative, positive logarithmic, negative logarithmic, p fall logarithmic, negative fall logarithmic, and now we've got the positive full wave, full waff. Not really sure what this is. Oh. This is half the, yeah, this is uh, the absolute value of a sine wave. Well, could be useful. And then, of course, we've got a negative value of the absolute sine wave. Or the negative absolute value. Yeah. P half. Oh, lots of adjusting over here to get it correctly on the screen. This is the oh yeah the bottom side of the um, waveform is being zeroed out, and of course this is the other way around. The top half of the waveform is getting zeroed out. So Lorentz pulse. I guess that the pulse has been called by its uh, author, Lorentz. Or something. Not sure. No, you can't just do the cycle. It's a multi tone. So, what tones are in there then? There was a peak at. I'm guessing it should be our 500 uh, kilohertz signal. So, let's look at the table. Yeah, there you go. Well, it's roughly 500 kilohertz, 488. And we've got the Resonant frequency of 977. So, yeah, quite a multitone uh, over here. A random noise. Well, how random is this noise? I guess it's pretty random. ECG. Yeah, this uh, looks like this. Trapezoid. Oh, I thought we already had that. Apparently, we didn't. Sync pulse. Oh uh, yeah, I think that this is for the modulation of uh, of things or something. Wave impulse. Ah, oh, there you go. You can now set an impulse. But with what? Yeah. Well, A W G N. A whole lot of. Uh, Crap. AM. Oh, this is the AM radio frequency modulation uh, signal. Uh, so yeah, and FM. No, my oscilloscope isn't having it today. I want a good and clear signal. And not 
the one that you're giving me right now. Oh well, so. Chirp. Yeah. It's chirpy, I guess. ARP1. Yeah, this is everything that's inside the uh, AWG itself. But it's programmable by the user. Oh, by the way, you can also use this scroll button to scroll through the wave. Yeah. So there are 64 programmable waves. And then you go back to the sine wave. So, yeah, well, that's the waves. Now we've got a modulation button that allows you to modulate a signal into another signal. So we've got various modulation modes, F, S, K. So you can choose your source. So channel two, external AC or manual, I suppose that is, and external DC. And of obviously, if you want to have uh, source channel two as your source input, you need to enable channel two and you can edit its settings like so now yeah you actually need to enable it and uh, as you can see it won't take a direct effect you need to be in the mod menu first and then the modulation is happening so that's a little bit of a shame i'd wanted it to be different like you can adjust the frequency of channel 1 so the modulation output frequency but you can't well, you can do it over here uh, and the amplitude but you can't adjust channel 2 so if you do it just stops oscilloscope is doing all kinds of weird things with the FSK now we want a sine wave to be to be the carrier oh I think you also need to set the correct carrier well this is most likely going to be a sine wave so let's use the ASK yeah cool if we amplitude we can adjust yeah we can adjust the amplitude so yeah again if you want to change channel 2 the modulation stops and if you press it again, it resumes. PSK, burst, AM, FM. Yeah, this is uh, how FM radio looks. And PM. Oh, you can adjust the bias. Don't see a whole lot of things happening. That's probably because I'm triggering at it. So, yeah, that's it for the modulation. Oh, you can also use a uh, voltage controlled oscillator input. So I guess that's basically just a frequency or something. So the sweep, you can do uh, sweeps with it. And that's a good point, good thing, good future, good everything, but you can only do it on channel one. And that's a little bit of a bummer, because yeah, I want to have both channels making a sweep. But you can't, so that's a shame. And well, objects, you can do a frequency sweep, you can do an amplitude sweep, you can do an offset sweep or a duty cycle sweep. That's pretty cool. Well, let's actually do a amplitude sweep because everybody has seen a frequency sweep. So yeah, this is still the old frequency, the 500 uh, kilohertz frequency. Start at five and end at 10. Um, and we want that to take five seconds. And in order to start the actual sweep, you need to press OK. And then you can see that the amplitude changes to 10 volts and jumps back. Now, as you can see, it's jumping back immediately. Well, you can change that by pressing the direction. The sweep will stop and if you do it again, it will go in the reverse direction. If you press the direction, oh, that's the mode button. If you press the direction button once more, you get forth to back, and then it will be a continuous sweep. So as you can see right here, so it's going to 10 volts, then back to five, and then up to 10 and to five, and, and then you are still going to uh, forth and back. 
You can also do a logarithmic sweep. So at the logarithmic time base, I suppose. Yeah, now well, let's do it forth to back. You can see, really see the logarithmic action over there. Yeah, pretty cool. So, of course, you can adjust the time. Yeah, it's oh, it's really quick. Cool. So yeah, lots of things to play around with. And duty cycle, yeah, let's see what happens if we do a duty cycle sweep with a sine wave. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, strange that they give you this option. Well, let's do a... Can it, oh, we can with a square wave. So there's a third PNC over here. And it's labeled counter next to output 1, output 2. Let me grab my... Uh, BNC to alligator clips because luckily this oscilloscope is not really uh, signal generator less it has got a calibration signal generator output a 1 kilohertz square wave that you can use to calibrate your probes but we can also use it to test the counter of our AWG. So attach the grounding point and attach the calibration. And there you go, you can see the numbers change one kilohertz frequency. It's also a well it's obviously it's a counter. It can also count the signal changes stop start zero gate 10 seconds yeah this is this only applies to the frequency option this will now wait for 100 seconds to actually get the frequency so if you change it to 10 seconds yeah there you go one kilohertz well actually one than one kilohertz which is not correct and you can use AC coupling. That's the uh, the counter functionality. Let's go to the VCO. Now this is a little bit of a new one for me as well. Because I didn't really use it. Let's just start it. And 20 hertz. VCO be begin. Stop. I guess that we need to take a look at the uh, back side of the device. Over here at the back, there's a Fizio in, 0 to 5 volts. And I guess that that allows you to well, some, do some kind of triggering with an external Fizio input or something. Uh, there are also uh, two BNCs at the bottom. This is sync in, this is sync out. That you can use to synchronize multiple AWGs together. And there's a trigger... FSK, ASK and PSK inputs that you can use to trigger to those signals. So let's take a look at the front again, shall we? This is going to be a more in-depth explanation of the menu. Well, I guess the VCO, before we go to the system menu, I guess the VCO is just a sweep but then with VCO input or something. This is the system menu, you can save Presets, really useful, because if you've got a project that you're testing, you can save them to these slots. You've got 20 slots you can save, and, and obviously you can load them. The sync, as I said, there's a sync input and sync output that allows you to synchronize multiple AWGs together. Uh, the config. Here you can configure everything, change the language, Chinese and English, I guess. Buzzer, you can turn off the buzzer. That's really cool, because I can imagine you, well, the pressing of the, the keys, it's not that annoying when uh, the buzzer sounds, but please stop doing this. 
it's really annoying. And M slash S, well this is the uplink mode. I guess that if you choose slave that other AWG status master will be able to well, actually talk to this one and configure it I guess and yeah so that's that and uplink just enables or disables that uh, uplink so sync non master on nice uh, little summary more well in more you can configure if channel 1 should be on or off at boot and same for channel 2 and you can reset the thing to its factory default so yeah that's uh, that's really it for this uh, AWG uh, review it's a pretty nice thing I'm well surprised by the, the, the quality of the signal and well it wasn't entirely cheap but it wasn't really expensive I mean the AWG for this uh, oscilloscope you can uh, connect on USB AWG a 20 megahertz AWG for this scope costed around $350 and that's a 20 megahertz AWG and now you've got a 60 megahertz AWG for 80 euros so yeah and you also need to purchase a license for the Sigland oscilloscope AWG option and with this one you don't the only downside is that you can't really adjust your AWG from your scope well I didn't do it anyway well that's it for this video well, that's almost it for this video uh, the, uh, the, the people who buy this thing will be very excited and when they're done playing they will just use the power button and everything goes off and it's pretty nice because the moment you press it everything goes on but what this button does is it only turns off the screen and the lights of the buttons while and of course it disables the output signals but the rest of the system still stays active so uh, lately I was positioning this uh, into a setup like this and I felt like here like why is this thing hot? I mean it's off and then I looked around on the internet and then I read that if you use this power button only the user interface will switch off. So actually to completely shut it down you need to reach for the power switch that's at the back and when you click that now the thing is completely off so that's a, a, a tip for the uh, for the young players over there who recently bought this uh, AWG and are very excited with it so I, I hope you like this uh, well this kind of a video this in-depth tour of the FY6900 AWG I'm also planning to do one for my oscilloscope. I've had it for, well, I think it's been two years now. It's really good device uh, for the money. I mean, it was expensive, but it wasn't that expensive as some others. And yeah, so I'm, I'm also planning to do a, a full review of my oscilloscope. So, as always, stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hey guys, this is Tim. I hope you liked that video. If you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, you can also share the video with your friends and hit that like button. I'll see you in the next one.